The social cognitive theory of learning focuses on how people learn by observing others and how they eventually assume control over their own behavior over time. It also emphasizes that people and their environment mutually influence each other through reciprocal causation between the person, the environment, and the behavior. This definition is a summary of Chapter 10 of the Amrod text, Educational Psychology, Developing Learners. There are four major points to social cognitive theory, models and modeling of behavior, efficacy, self-efficacy, collective efficacy, resilient efficacy, and even teacher self-efficacy, reinforcement and punishment, which is different from behaviorism, but has a similar concept, and self-regulation, which is what happens at the end of social cognitive theory when the behavior that's modeled then becomes that person's own behavior that they take control over. Models and modeling is one of the most important concepts behind social cognitive theory. Models can be live, which is a person who's alive, who you can interact with on a daily basis, or who you just know from teachers to parents to peers, or symbolic models, which can be fictional characters from books, TV, movies, other forms of media. Modeling is demonstrating a behavior from another person or observing and imitating another person's behavior. An effective model is typically competent, they have prestige and power, and their behaviors are relevant to what the learner's circumstances are. For example, a basketball player who is in high school may model their behavior after LeBron James. Successful modeling of someone else's behavior requires attention, retention, motor reproduction, which is actually having the ability to do that thing that you're modeling, and most importantly, motivation, which is actually continuously trying to do that thing you're modeling. Um, as far as learning is concerned in academic skills, you can also learn academic skills by observing a model. Um, you can learn how to do a task and even how to think about a task, and this is referred to as cognitive modeling. As a negative, however, aggression can also be learned from modeling. Efficacy, though a separate point in and of itself, is very closely related to modeling in that models can help you believe what you can and what you think you can and cannot do, and what tasks you may take up or avoid. Self-efficacy is where people tend to choose certain tasks or activities at which they believe they can succeed or avoid others at which they think they might fail at. This can usually be influenced by seeing someone else succeed at a task and thinking that you can do it in that same way, or seeing someone else fail at a task and feeling like you're going to have that same kind of situation. For example, if people tend to say that a teacher is hard and multiple people tend to fail with that teacher, you may also believe that and you're going to just avoid that task altogether. They usually consider previous successes and failures when thinking of which task to take up. However, there's resilient self-efficacy, which is still trying to do something even after previous failures or seeing other people fail at it. You'll also form opinions based on successes and failures and responses from others, and this is typically how people come to their own conclusions of what their personal self-efficacy is. There's also collective self-efficacy, which is working as a group to succeed at something and also learning to coordinate roles and responsibilities. There's also teacher self-efficacy, which is what a teacher believes they can and cannot teach their students in their class and how much they're going to give to trying to help their class succeed and at what point they may avoid certain topics or abandon certain topics when they see that it's just not working. Reinforcement and punishment is also included in social cognitive theory but differs from that of behaviorism in that in this theory, they believe that consequences 
only have an effect on behavior if the learners are aware of the contingency. So whereas in behaviorism, students or learners may not have been aware of what was happening and it was something that was just being shaped into them, here it doesn't have an effect unless the people are aware of what's going on. Learners then form expectations about likely consequences of future actions and behave accordingly based on whether they want to increase that behavior or decrease that behavior based on incentives that are going to come out of it. Incentives are a very big part of social cognitive theories, um, determinations of reinforcement and punishment and explicitly where it differs from behaviorism. It also is based on existing patterns of reinforcement and punishment. So there comes a point where based on seeing behavior happen to others or how things happen around you, you start to understand what may, what may be the outcome of certain behaviors. Another, based on that point, is vicarious reinforcement and punishment, which is responding in an increased way or decreased way based on what you've seen happen to someone else. So if you see that a student in your class is always getting in trouble for a certain type of behavior, you may decrease that behavior in yourself even though you've never been addressed about it, but you see how it's happening to someone else. So it still is based on there being a model of someone else doing that potentially, but it's not an intentional model. Modeling efficacy and consequences all should lead to increasingly self-regulated behavior, which is setting personal goals and engaging in behaviors and cognitive processes that lead to goal attainment that are all internally created and are no longer completely influenced by what's going on in your environment or with the people around you. Um, Self-regulation includes self-instructions, especially while performing complex actions and behaviors. You'll pretty much talk yourself through it and this is something you're doing externally. You're going to also learn to self-monitor your own behavior. This is probably the end point of watching modeling and watching vicarious reinforcements and punishments. You now know what kind of behaviors that you want to do and you can regulate them on your own. You'll also be able to self-evaluate, which is judge your own performances or behaviors. And eventually you will have your own goal setting, your own planning, your own way of motivating yourself, your own way of having attention to the things you're trying to do, forming your own learning strategies, and knowing when to seek help. So self-regulation is basically the culmination of the previous three points, and this is what social cognitive theory should lead to. So all of those outside influences from the environment and outside things that are affecting your behavior, whether it's people, places, or things, should then eventually lead to you being able to monitor and self-regulate your own behavior. As with all learning theories, there are strengths and there are weaknesses. The big picture behind um, social cognitive theory is that people learn a great deal from observation of others and that they'll have considerable control over their own learning and behavior eventually. And motivation has a significant impact on what they actually learn and how they're actually going to perform. However, the weakness behind this is that learning is an internal process so it does not always lead to behavioral change and the fact that people are very aware of who they're choosing to model themselves after in opposition to something like behaviorism where this just seems like something that's involuntarily happening to the person so social cognitive theory is based on motivation and the person actually being aware of what they're doing and incentives that basically motivate them to keep doing the things they're doing. So this is a weakness to the theory where it seems like learning can be stopped at any point. The people don't have to do 
they don't want to do, they can avoid certain tasks. No other learning theory really addresses learning in that same way where someone can pretty much just give up. Self-efficacy actually makes it seem as though a person can reach the conclusion of, I can't, I won't, or I know I will not do this thing, and they just do not complete it. And they can choose their own models for behaviors instead of it being an internal thing where how something directly happens to them is the only influence over how they behave. There's a lot of vicariousness in social cognitive theory and models where something doesn't have to happen to you at all before you form a conclusion. That's a very, that's an extreme weakness in that you can't be 100% sure of what you can do or how your behavior will be taken at a certain thing or how you'll perform a certain task unless you actually engage in that task. And social cognitive theory is very strongly based on environmental influences having an effect on your behavior and not you actually participating in the actions and seeing how your behavior is affected by it. Also, because of that, the reciprocal nature of the environment, the person, and the behavior, not only does the environment affect you, the person, or your behaviors, but in the same sense, you can affect, you can affect your environment. For example, you may have a teacher completely give up on you. This is an example from the Armra text where you might work, where a teacher may work with a student and accept that the student just cannot complete the task. And this has to do with the teacher's own form of self-efficacy, of accepting that they can't teach the student that thing and abandoning it as opposed to most other theories where you're supposed to hope the student can pick up a different learning strategy and, and work with it, or maybe there's a cultural approach that you can take to helping the student. But social cognitive theory actually makes it seem as though there's certain things you cannot do, or if that student is not motivated enough to do it, they will not do it. And I think that that's the downfall of the theory in that motivation and contingencies and incentives have a lot to do with learning as opposed to actual metacognition and the students sitting there and working out ways of doing it and not accepting no as an answer but instead using a different approach and I think that's the strength of other learning theories. However, using models of behavior is a strength in that you can learn a lot of things without having to take that risk yourself or put yourself out there and you can see how teachers will react to certain things and your peers can be very good models for you as far as how you might want to go about learning something especially with the academic skills part the cognitive modeling where you can learn how to do something or how to think about something based on modeling your behavior after another student or modeling it after your teacher and your teacher's example so there are strengths and there are weaknesses to this theory Overall, it's a strong learning theory and one that is used very frequently outside the classroom and translates well to the classroom in focusing on how you learn by observing others.